Good morning. Welcome to the First Congregational Church where everyone's someone and Jesus is Lord. You know, this week I finally took that plunge. I went and I looked at my retirement account and I noticed that, well, it isn't as bad as it was two weeks ago, but it's probably not as good as it was two months ago either. And so I immediately thought to myself, Lord, what's the plan here? And of course, that reminded me of a passage in Luke, which is It's kind of funny, really. Um, It has to do with a man who comes to Jesus with a financial question. Uh, Let's start reading. It's in Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 13. One of the multitude said to him, that's Jesus, teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, man, who made me a judge or divider over you? I think that's funny because here's Jesus, the Messiah, surrounded by people with questions. What is the meaning of life? And are you the Messiah? And will you heal my daughter? And suddenly this man rushes through the crowd. I can see him in my mind elbowing his way in. And he, he runs up to Jesus and he says, tell my brother to give me my money. And Jesus, of course, just totally blows him off and says, hey, I don't judge over you. That's your business. But Jesus does take that incident and he turns it into a lesson um, in which he addresses the two questions that we probably should be asking ourselves today. Um, And that is, first of all, uh, who do we trust? And uh, he uses a a parable of a a farmer. A farmer has built um, some bigger barns. In fact, let's just read it, uh, continuing there in uh, chapter 12, uh, this time starting in verse 16. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all of my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So Jesus tells this parable to to let the crowd know, let the people listening know what is it that's important. And more importantly, who is it that you trust? This man, this farmer. He was trusting on his goods in order to take care of him for his life. He he wasn't concerned about what God might say about things. He wanted to know that he was set for life. And what he was trusting in turned out to be not trustworthy after all. Now, it's very important that we I mentioned here that Jesus isn't against saving. He's not saying that having a retirement account is bad or having an emergency fund is bad or, or having meat in your freezer is bad or even extra toilet paper in your cupboard. None of those things are wrong. It depends on what you're trusting. The problem with this man wasn't that he had stuff, though it does appear that he might have been hoarding and having much more than he needed. The problem was he was trusting in that instead of trusting in God who provided those things. Trusting in stuff is ultimately futile. Those things can't internally or eventually save us from the problems that we have. What we really need is to trust in God who provides for us. And Jesus goes on and he talks about how God provides freely. This is where we read about the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. And God provides for both of them even though they don't spend time worrying about it and being anxious. It's not that they don't work, it's that they don't worry and they're not anxious about where these things are come from. And in the same, for the same reason, we also ought not to be anxious, even in today's uh, economic climate, even in the health crisis that's going on all around the world. Uh, we don't need to be anxious about that because God provides freely In fact, what it says is, for all the nations of the world seek these things, that is, goods and food and shelter, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things shall be yours as well. So there's no reason to be anxious. God will provide what we need when we need it uh, to, uh, to do his will. Remember, it's about what we need and not necessarily what we want Uh, Maybe I would like to drive a uh, $70,000 Lexus. That's great that I want that, but I don't need that. And I can't expect God to provide that, Um, but he will provide what I need. Now, the second thing, the second point we need to make here is that, you notice, comes with a, a catch. 
Uh, it isn't that God provides everything that everybody needs. It's those who are seeking the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all things will be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. And so we need to be seeking God. That's the second question. The first question was, who do we trust to provide for our needs? And the second question is, what does it mean to seek his kingdom? If, if our being provided for depends on our seeking the kingdom, then we need to know what seeking the kingdom is all about. And it, very simply, um, the, to the kingdom of God is in our hearts. It's a heart that is seeking to make God its highest value, where God is king. There's an old Campus Crusade brochure where it talks about putting God on your throne or putting Jesus on the throne of your heart. And that's basically what Jesus is saying here, that if we will put him on the throne of our heart, then we are seeking that. Now, to be honest with you, I can't say that I'm there yet. I can't say that, that Jesus is on the throne of my heart 24-7 all the time. I, I keep wanting to knock him off and jump back on there myself. But as long as I am seeking to put God as my highest value, the Bible calls it my treasure. If, if the kingdom of God, if the lordship of God in my life is my highest treasure, then I can trust him to guide me and to provide for the needs as I do that. Now, the farmer... In our parable earlier, he was not seeking that. In fact, in, in verse 19, it says, this is the farmer speaking, And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. So in other words, the farmer wanted an easy life. His highest value was leisure and opulence and, and relaxation. Um, and I can, frankly, I can relate with that farmer. Uh, but that's not to be our highest value in our life. That's not to be the treasure, the thing that we hold up. Um, and for us, um, it's probably not barns full of grain, uh, but maybe it is our 401k, or maybe it's our income, or our house, or our even people in our lives, maybe friends or family. Um, there's lots of things that we might have as a higher value than doing the will of God, than having God as the king of our life. What is it that you might be um, needing to knock off the throne in order to place Jesus as your highest treasure? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Um, and it's hard to do. In fact, it's impossible to do on our own. Now, we need help with that. We are naturally selfish and self-centered. We naturally desire to be the lords of our own lives. And yet God is saying that, no, it's just the opposite. We need to make him the Lord of our life. Fortunately, he's willing to help. If you notice in verse 32, it says, fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Lord wants to give us this relationship that he's promised us to have. It's why Jesus came and died and rose from the dead so that we could have the relationship with God that he's called us to have. Our job is not to be anxious about it, not to worry about it, but to honestly seek his lordship in our lives. Now, we fail. And that's understandable and normal and human. And God still loves us and will continue to help us as we seek him first in our lives. Will you do that this week? Will you spend some time seeking to put the Lord God on the throne of your heart? Will you examine your heart and say, what might be competing for that space? What is it that I might be holding above the lordship of Jesus this week. And as God reveals things to you, we certainly ask him for his help. As he reveals things to you, just repent of that and say, Lord, you are my king. I will worship you with all that I do. I know as you do that, your life will uh, be less anxious and your joy will be more complete. So remember, this week, spend some time seeking the kingdom of God. See Shall I?
Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love and your grace and for allowing us to know you and walk with you in this coming week. Please help us to seek you with all of our hearts, to treasure you above all else, and to be your people in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, for making that possible. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless. Thank you.